Hello fans, it's the VC Anders Critiquer. Haven't done a mini review in a while. Anyway, a lot of you guys are familiar with the classic special Why Charlie Brown Why, when old Chuck had the balls to dwell into the very hot issue of cancer, but not many people are familiar with when he had the balls to go into the only slightly less hot issue of divorce only five years prior, and that's hardly a surprise because you can't find that video on streaming, DVD, or even an upload on YouTube. In fact, it's not available anywhere because it doesn't exist. Now, please remember, I did say in the title this was only kind of a peanut special, so the title was completely false advertising just to get more views from you guys. Plus, in all honesty, it would be kind of hard to do a peanut special about divorce given their somewhat limited portrayal of adults. What do you mean you guys are getting divorced? And daddy's running off with Peppermint Patty's dad and filing to not have to pay child support? Good grief! However, Bill Melendez did so give us a special on divorce in his classic Peanuts style in 1985, which in my opinion is the greatest handling of divorce in all children's media. It's funny how while lots of children's shows are brave enough to delve into even more serious issues like terminal illnesses, racism, sexism, death, and even freaking drug addiction, not many cartoons have the balls to go into detail with divorce, which sucks because, like all the other issues mentioned before, may suck ass, but it's a part of life that kids should learn that they sometimes just have to deal with. Hell, even Sesame Street chickened out at the last second when they were planning to do a divorce episode. What, death's okay to go into great detail with, but not divorce? And again, whenever a kids program does gather up the courage to go into the hot issue, it's usually done pretty delicately and half-assed. It's usually just a side comment like a kid cries, My mommy and daddy are getting divorced, I'm so sad! Or, Will my parents get divorced if they fight? And then some adult comes along and tells them otherwise like this, You did not do anything to cause your parents to get a divorce. Not anything. Children don't cause divorces. Grown-ups do. Divorce is a grown-up problem. Unfortunately, it hurts children too. Sometimes adults lose their tempers and argue. Just like kids disagree sometimes or get mad at people they love. This is all my fault, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. Dude, you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> yeah, I know that's not a kid's show, but I couldn't resist putting it in the lineup. But in 1985, Bill Melendez, who also showed he wasn't afraid to tackle cancer only five years later... Oh, he didn't? Huh, never heard of him. Well, anyway, Melendez apparently decided that if no other kids' media was going to cover this sensitive topic in extreme detail, he might as well, and gave us an all-star cast DMA special doing just that called Happily Ever After. Uh, no. Not that Happily Ever After. You disgrace Bill Melendez just by assuming I'm referring to that piece of crap. Uh, that is a very underrated series, but no, I'm not referring to that happily ever after either. Thank you! And while this isn't technically a peanut special, you can definitely tell this is from the same director. From the choppy but charming animation, to the jazzy background music, to the snarky writing, to actual children doing the voices of the child characters, and more. But okay, what's the story? Well, it's about this kid named Molly Conway, who's pretty much an older Sally Brown, who lives with her parents, voiced by Carrie Fisher and Henry Winkler, and Snoopy and Spike's long-lost brother, Ribbon. The kid aims to be the next Lady Gaga one day, but for now we'll have to settle with hopefully landing the lead partner school play as Cinderella, but even that may not be within her grasp. For one, her teacher, voiced by June Foray, apparently casts actors depending on how well they fit into the costumes rather than how much talent they display. Yeah, it kinda seems like they predicted Hollywood in the 2020s, huh? And even worse, her parents are too busy bitching at each other to offer much encouragement during this time. Hell, they're apparently on such bitter terms with each other that her mom would rather kiss her daughter on the lips than her husband. Get hot water! Get some disinfectant! Get some iodine! Ah. Uh, no! Get the friggin' police! Well, I'm sure her dad will- Will you come to see me if I'm in Cinderella? Well, you bet your little pink booties. You know what? On second thought, screw the police. FBI, open up! <laughs> okay, okay, let's get back on track. So as the days pass, Molly starts to notice only slightly less weird behavior from her parents. They seem rather dazed and are crying a lot more. 
And then one morning, they make her her favorite breakfast and offer to take her that night to her favorite pizza place topped off with a super expensive and calorie filled dessert. Molly shares what's going on with her friends the Skywalkers. Yeah, apparently the filmmakers really wanted to show off that they had Princess Leia in this. May the forced references be with you. Anyway, she and the gang examined the weird behavior, namely the constant mood swings, the arguments about money, and the fact that they're taking her out to her favorite restaurant with all her favorite foods. And yeah, they start to connect the dots and realize what's happening. They're gonna buy a baby. You dummy, people don't buy babies. A baby? I'll have a little sister. Or a brother. Yeah, they don't give you a choice. But that's great. That's just fine. Oh, you dirty mother fu- uh, Actually, I won't say in case there are kids watching, but yeah, you guys aren't really sugarcoating this shit, are you? So yeah, that night Molly's all like, yeah, cut the act, I know you're having a baby. And her parents awkwardly reveal that, while that's not the case, they do have some news for her. But it's not quite as pleasant, fortunately. And just listen to how mature and realistic the dialogue of the special can be at times. I try to understand, we don't do this on purpose. But we can't seem to stop hurting each other. Uh, so, uh, we just can't go on the way we are. Well, why don't you be different? Oh, baby, we've tried. We've, we really have. We've gone to counselors, you know, people that we talk to, and they've helped us all they could. But uh, we've decided, Daddy and I, that we just can't live together anymore. I don't want to hear this. Molly, please, try to understand. We're getting a divorce. I knew I didn't want to hear this. Seriously, when in a Bill Melinda's cartoon would you ever expect to hear about marriage counselors? Although I hear the reason it didn't work out for them was because Lucy wanted to raise her therapy fee from a nickel to a quarter. Then again, her therapy sure didn't help her number one patient out in the long run, so... I can't help but wonder if the little you-know-what played a part in driving them further apart. And let me know about your fan theories in the comments. So Molly's parents can explain how they love her, just not each other, so her dad's moving out, her mom gets full custody, uh, keep in mind this was released in the mid-80s, back when joint custody was relatively uncommon, but she can visit her pop whenever she wants. And the rest of the special is Molly trying to pull the parent trap, and all of her attempts feeling miserably, and her having to come to grips with the reality of the situation. So besides covering a very sensitive topic so effectively and in detail, what else makes the special so incredible? Well, for starters, the animation. I know the movements aren't particularly smooth, but the expressions are just so layered and detailed. I guess it's hardly a surprise since we've seen Bill Melinda's get a ton of expression from simplistic character designs before with the Peanut specials, but this may honestly be his finest work ever. Seeing these dot-eyed characters express themselves in the levels of a Disney film is just bonkers. The backgrounds also look pretty good too. They're not insanely detailed, but the artists make the most of their low budget by smoking some pretty heavy cannabis for inspiration. I am open to the possibility that maybe Pablo Picasso, Lewis Carroll, Dr. Seuss, and Gary Baseman weren't high as a cloud when creating their content, but if any of these background artists were ever on trial for drug use, I think this cartoon alone could be some pretty solid evidence the prosecution could use against them. But honestly, I think most of them look really beautiful, especially during the sad song montage playing in the background now of Molly's depression after her parents break the bad news to her. Yeah, to hell with It Changes from Snoopy Come Home, this is the saddest song in any Bill Melinda's production. I mean, it happens right after her parents do the one thing you never do when you're in love. Yeah, sorry Murray reactions, but I ultimately decided that the purple dinosaur wasn't enough to scare me away from that prank I like to play on you anymore. Face it, Thomas Murray. 
You'll never be rid of me. Yeah, you can say that again, Hilda. I mean, what could you possibly throw at me that's worse than Barney? But moving on, the story is every bit as effectively dramatic as its animation. Partly thanks to its stellar all-star cast, take the parents' introduction for instance. It's only about two minutes, but Winkler and Fisher's vocal performances topped off with Melinda's getting into the background artist's spot while directing, plus a few other times here and there in the movie, really makes it believable that these two were just inches away from divorce. You give it a rest. Give Bates and Freeman a rest. Bates and Freeman happens to be my job. Career. All right, career. Obsession. What? Nothing. What did you say? Could I have the toast and butter, please? Did you at least deposit those checks? I don't want to be over. I, I'm not the only one. The what? The, who spends money? I didn't say that you... You spend your share, all and right. And I bring in all of it, don't I? Oh. And I thought the parents find The Incredibles was intense, but at the same time, you also feel a lot of love and support to Molly and their performances to her, making it clear that they don't love her any less and the divorce is not her fault at all. Oh yeah, that reminds me, remember both those overused divorce tropes I mentioned in the intro? The special keeps them, but doesn't spend all its time on them either. It has Molly wondering if her parents split up because she was slacking on her chores and her stepping up her game, but then her mom saying no, not her fault, and then moves on from that. And don't get me wrong, it's important that kids know that divorce is never their fault. Well, unless said kids are Will Ferrell and John C. Riley, but those two are something else. But it also knows that there are plenty of other issues to teach kids about divorce and moves on from that. What about the mommy and daddy have one fight in their divorce cliche? Well, one of Molly's friends Joey is going through this, mostly because his parents are voiced by then real life couple Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman, two of the biggest hotheads in Hollywood at the time. Are you telling me that I can't count? Come on, wh who's, what happened to it, Rose? Come on, tell me! What happens to us? Some nights you can't even count half the six innings! What kind of crack is that supposed to be? Uh, uh, you heard it, you figure yeah. it out! And yeah, I'll dress the elephant in the room in a bit. So Molly decides it's time for parent trap plan B, since the present from daddy scam was a bust and says, Let's run away and our folks will be so overjoyed to find us, yours won't split up and mine will get back together. So they try it, but their folks see right through it. Anyway, DeVito and Perlman explain to their son that they're both obnoxious, loudmouthed hotheads and that's just how they communicate, doesn't mean they hate each other. Yes, I know that it's extremely ironic that these two actors deliver this cliché, seeing how DeVito and Perlman eventually divorced as well, but point is, handles the cliché perfectly and doesn't waste all its time on it. But I think what really makes the special shine the most is Molly. She's already a pretty likable character, being ambitious and driven, but also wanting her family back together at any cost but the kid who voices her is not exactly Hollywood material, but does have a lot of passion and dedication to the role. She definitely has the same plucky cuteness that most of the kids who voice the Peanut characters did as well, but also really sells the emotional scenes. Well, what am I supposed to do? I can't. You just don't care how I feel. Either of you. I hate you. Both of you. Remember back when Pixar used to make scenes like this? But as dark and emotional as this special is, it also knows when to lighten up and be humorous or heartfelt. Seeing how this is from the director of the Peanut specials, it's got some pretty witty writing in it. Here's his phone number. You can call him anytime. Nine years with a daddy, and I wind up with a phone number. All right, you mice, on you go. I can't. What? I can't go on. Well, you have to. I just can't. Why not? It's You're standing on my tail. I wanted us to do Streetcar, but Miss McCullough said it was too short. Streetcar? Sure, the little streetcar that could. <sighs> uh huh, that streetcar. You know, I really need to do an old versus new of that story sometime. <sighs> I meant of a streetcar named Desire. And as for the heartfelt moments, a lot of those come from June Foray, who voices the teacher and school counselor. But the nice thing about dreams is, if one doesn't come true, we can always dream another one. So simple and yet so powerful. So if you're wondering if Molly's parents ever get back together, no, they don't. But I think that was the right decision on the filmmaker's part, kind of for the same reason for why the ending of Mrs. Doubtfire was changed. It'd probably give false hope to kids whose parents had just gotten divorced, 
but like in Mrs. Doubtfire, the two form a very healthy relationship as exes, and Molly gets to see her dad more often now, and topped off with a very sweet ending of revealing that the Carol Burnett narrator was grown up Molly telling the story to her own kid, it's a very sweet ending indeed. So yeah, this special sounds really amazing, doesn't it? It covers divorce so maturely, yet simple enough for kids to understand, so why isn't it more popular? Well again, I think most adults just assume divorce is too much for kids to handle, and they just want all funny and happy cartoons, so I think this special might have been, well, buried under the rug by pansy parents who didn't want to traumatize their kids. And that sucks because kids really are a lot more capable of understanding harsh reality than we give them credit for. And as disturbing as that Maggie Smith-like Muppet was, she's absolutely right. Divorce may be a grown-up problem, but unfortunately, it's one that hurts children also. So I think it's important that we prep our children for if it should happen. Anyway, despite never being especially popular, the special did get a sequel called Two Daddies, in which Molly's dad starts exploring a sexual orientation in more detail and... I'm joking, I'm joking. Yeah, considering how much conservative parents flipped out at a same-sex kiss in a kid's film in the 2020s, in the late 80s, yeah, it probably wouldn't have been pretty. No, the special actually teaches kids about how to deal with a step-parent being introduced to their life. A fitting idea for a sequel to this story, but the special itself, well, to quote the nostalgia critic, it blued. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but definitely a huge downgrade from the first film. Remember all the layered facial expressions and beautifully surreal backgrounds in Happily Ever After? Yeah, chuck that shit. The expressions and backgrounds here are extremely basic and boring. Even the character designs and movements feel... a bit off. The animation of the first film was also cheap, but it had passion. This just feels like it was done for a paycheck. But more importantly, there just wasn't much emotion in this special. Granted, your parent finding a lover who's not your birth parent is nowhere near as sensitive as divorce, but it still could have made a strong special with some care. But instead is executed... really like a lame 2000s family comedy. You know, the kids assuming the boyfriend who's not Molly's dad is from ISIS and treating him like such. And even when it tries to be emotional, I just don't feel it. When Molly was lashing out in the first film, it was really moving. But here, Molly just feels like a snobby little... You know what, you know, being word for dogs that I don't want to use for kids. And as for the more comedic direction it tries to take, it mostly falls flat. With the exception of this one line. Taking drastic action now is premature. I was premature, what's wrong with that? Yeah, that line is gold. But this special is not, which is surprising because, yes, Melinda's did return to direct it, as did all the celebrities from the previous film with the exception of Carol Burnett. But I guess this is just one of those instances of no one giving a rat's ass about the sequel. However, this video isn't about that special, it's about its predecessor, and its predecessor is gold. It's a classic peanut special in everything except me, but doesn't sugarcoat how much of a negative impact divorce has on children. But more importantly, it teaches kids really everything there is to know about it, from how it's not their fault. You made Nancy and I resent each other. It is absolutely 150% your fault. Of course it's their fault. Not 99% of the time anyway. How one fight doesn't automatically guarantee divorce. How their parents will still love them even when they don't love each other. And how some broken relationships unfortunately just can't be fixed. But as for Ray said it best, if one dream doesn't come true... We can always dream another one. And one dream I have is that one day the special will get the recognition it so rightly deserves. Well, that's all I got for... Huh, it's a message from Murray Reactions. Dear VC, this ends now. Barney was the A-bomb. Now it's time for the hydrogen bomb. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> yeah, bloody likely, Murray. What could possibly be more annoying than that purple wanker of a dinosaur? Yeah, you tell him, Hilda. Come on, man. What you got for me? How about this? Dinky Winky, Hanky Winky, Dipsy, Lola. I'm going to break your neck, VC, after I make David destroy every copy of that flyaway song. <laughs> 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 la la